Guys, this episode was dry. It was drier than a camel's left toenail. Fam, it was drier than a rhino's batty. <laughs> Bro, it was just dead. It was it was Sahara dry. It was like, you know when you eat Weetabix with no milk? I never done that still, but that's what it's like. It was dead. And that whole Tyreek thing, yeah? I'm sorry. Call me a pessimist, yeah? I don't believe him. <laughs> we don't believe you. You need more people. What, a day after Whitney and um, Loch Ness Monster got voted the, 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 the favourite couple and them things there? I don't know, man. Call me a pessimist, but let's break it down. Let's do a deep dive like we're going snorkeling and them things there. Let's dive into it like Michael Phelps and let's, you get me, bust it down like Tatiana. If I haven't introduced myself, guys, it's your boy Fred Stones. Thanks for passing by the channel. Please hit that sub button for me if you ain't done, yet, done it yet. Comment, share, like, you know how we do. Guys, I'm not going to lie, man feeling a bit under the weather right now, a bit run down. Man's not his usual self, you know them ones there. But I'm still going to try giving you guys some energy, you get me? Because I need some energy, give me... No, on the reels, I'm going to try, you get me? So tonight's episode started when they just come back from the beach club. And everyone, Ty and Ella in the beginning, but everyone was talking about it. But Ty and Ella, they was wondering like who Whitney and Lockham's going to bring back. Because obviously there was three couples left and Whitney and Ella had to choose in it. They was thinking, yo, who's Whitney gonna bring back like a DJ and them things there? Looking to bring man back like some retro J's. They didn't know who, he, who she was gonna bring back. And they were just pondering on it, discussing and them things there. Them two, yeah, they're in a good space. In this episode, there was, you get me? There was high off life, you get me? Ooh, I get so high when I'm around you, baby. There was, look, Ella was glowing this episode. Tyreek, just like Tyreek, necklace. <laughs> Tyree's cool still, I'd just be having bants. But yeah, him and Ella were just discussing who Whitney was going to bring back, like a rewind and them things there. And Ty, yeah, bro, this brother, I swear down, he proper loves the American culture. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't because I wear the fitted hats and all that stuff. But this guy dresses like a character from Boys in the Hood. Like one of them man that just sit on a porch drinking 40s and stuff all day. Man's dressed like Michael Schofield in Prison Break and them things there. <laughs> He loves his vest and little wife beaters. You notice he uses American twang here and there as well, talking about when he calls um, Ella his shorty and them things there. What? Man. Anyway, yeah, Molly was telling Captain Birdseye's nephew, Sammy, this little flipping Albanian gerbil, yeah, about the whole Zach situation and how she felt. Bro, I don't care. I actually don't care about Molly and Zach. I feel like it's so thick because... Molly, her mum works for the producers and they want her to have a storyline because she's just been sat in the background like green screen and them things there. I feel like this is just like, it's just dead. It's boring. I don't care. Then you got this Zach brother flipping built like a Tupperware. The brother talking like flipping Ali G and them things there. I can't even take him seriously. The brother, I don't know why he talks like that. Bro, he's just a waste, man. I, the whole thing is just like, and you can genuinely tell the brother does not even like Molly. He looks like a prisoner. Them man, they look like one of them prisoners that them Muslim man, them ISIS man used to hold to the camera. Make them read out a message before they shot them and them things there. That's how he looks. He looks shook. Like, he just being used for Molly to look. Molly would have been dashed up from one day. Fam, Molly get dashed up like, oh, Ragu, no one don't care about no Molly. But obviously her mum, family, waste man thing anyway. Bro, I don't care about Molly and Zach. Then Whitney and the Loch Ness Monster came back here and everybody, the way they were shocked, the way their jaw was on the floor and they could not believe that this waste man, this little plumber, this little panini, the way people could not believe that he's come back. I think Ella or somebody even said, rah, this brother's got nine lives. He, li he literally has the them things there. And I can see everyone is divided like cheesecakes, divided like the sea when Moses parted it and them things there over this whole Whitney situation because people are like, oh, he shouldn't have brought back Mitch and, and Ella B, he should have brought back Katie and little Twiggy, Twiggy B, Twiggy D, Uzi. Don't get me wrong, like, I do like Uzi still, and I feel like the longer Uzi stayed in there with Katie, Katie's a waste, man. Absolute waste cadet, the biggest seagull you've ever seen in your life, yeah? And this girl, she's just stringing my man along. She's had her opportunity. Why is she still here? Boring. Why is she still here? And it's, it's a shame that Uzi had to be, like, collateral damage and them things there. But fam... The amount of entertainment we've been getting from Mitch, yeah? That's my justification for it. That's, I feel like she brought back the right person. Although, if she had brought back Uzi and Thing, I would have justified it the same way. <laughs> you know what I was there? But I like that Mitch is back rather than KD and Uzi because they don't bring nothing to the show. In my opinion, IMO. You know, when I think about this whole Whitney and Lockham and them having to pick and everyone having their opinions, because everyone's got opinion stuff, yeah? I just feel like, 
Do you guys reckon they're setting Whitney and lock him up? I don't care about Loch Ness Monster. I, f I feel like they could be setting Whitney up like a gazebo, you know? Setting her up like a camp tent. I don't know because, like, she's, like, everybody target now. Everyone knows she's the favourite couple. Why they had to tell people? And now everyone feels like they should have had a choice or a hand in her decision. Shut up, man. Like, it's her decision, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? We're not all going to agree. Ty was the most vocal, because you know, like, he's their daddy. That's their biological dad and them things there. Even though they don't know yet. Ty was like, oh, I understand it's a hard decision and them things there, but I don't feel like you made the right decision. I feel like rare, rare, rare. Bro, Ty was loud about what he was saying. He was louder than a bag of piff. He was louder than an ice cream van and them things there. The way... This guy was saying what he was saying. And I, you know what, yeah? I like Ty, even though despite what certain people think about what I say about Ty. I'm just keeping it real. This is how Fred feels. You know them ones there? I like Ty, yeah? But I feel like that was wrong what he done there. If you don't feel like Scott was getting bullied because certain people said certain things to his face, yeah? What my man did to um, Mitchell today, that was bullying still. Because we all know the whole that... Ty has them over everyone. So for you to have out him in front of everyone and try to bad him up like that, that's disrespect. That's a waste man thing. I don't rate that. Even though he apologised later, which is cool, but at that point there, I didn't rate that. I was like, yo, like, how can you talk with so much chest and you ain't got no neck? You know them ones there? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get it. And I know some people are going to back Ty because he's good looking and people can't find no flaws in him, but he's a waste man. Remember I told you that? But he's a cool guy overall. <laughs> Whitney and the Loch Ness Monster explained why they made the choices and them things there. But I didn't know. Some people were telling me in the comments, even one of my brethren, shout out to Ned Jones, man. One of my brethren was telling me um, that apparently KD and Whitney had some beef. That, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have no idea about it. But either way, man, Mitch is cool, man. <laughs> Leave the boy Mitch, man. He's a crazy brother, but everyone needs some crazy people around. Do you know what I'm saying? Abby, Abby was peeing me off this episode. I was, yo... Fam, I wanted to dash a picnic table at her. I wanted to dash her here. I went, bro, she was getting me mad. This girl, I swear down, she looks like that woman that rides the mobility bike on flipping Benidorm. That looks like... <laughs> that looks like I've been like 10 years, I'm telling you. This girl looks like one of them things from flipping Men in Black. The one by the coffee machine, especially. That's what she looks like. The girl talking like, shut up, man. She, she just came in there the other day acting like you're some OG. Like, you should be having a voice. Fam. And it's not even that she shouldn't be having a voice, but it's a delusion. The girl is deluded. She's crazy. The only other person she should be with in that villa is Mitch. Not Scott, Mitch, because they're both as crazy. Do you know what I'm saying? They can have crazy kids together and all that. <laughs> I'm joking. But who told this girl to be chiming in and them things there? Piping up like a plumber. Piping up like... Fam. She was getting on my nerves. I'm not going to lie. Mitch wasn't happy about what Ty was talking about him and was saying about him, about how he shouldn't be here. And rightfully so, man. If Ty had any neck, I would have told him to wind it in, but he doesn't, so... Like, nah, man, that's a disrespect still. I feel like, I feel Mitch on that one still, I feel him. I feel like Ty, yeah, I don't know it's ever since they found out from the movie night that he was talking about Zach and... You know, remember he said, oh, I can't stand that. That's the worst of the worst. Crab barrel... Crab barrel... No, crabs and all that stuff, yeah? Remember, I don't know if it's since then or before that, but he despises Mitchell. Ty cannot stand Mitchell. He wants him gone like today. He's trying to get rid of Mitchell like excess fat. He does not want that brother there at all. Did you not see when Ella B was like, oh, yeah, you know, I can't, everybody knows I came for Mitch. You know, there's nobody else I came for. And she sounds like a dying patient, bro. She just sounds like a flipping gerbil. Like, oh, yeah, I came for Mitch. You liar. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah. And as much as I can't stand Abby, yeah, I'm glad Abby called her out. No, you didn't. You came for Ty. <laughs> she blatantly came for Ty, acting like you came for Mitch. Who comes for Mitch? Even his own parents don't come for him. They've been playing hide and seek with him all his whole life and them things there. Like you came for Mitch. <laughs> but Abby told her about herself then. They got into a little back and forth and all that stuff. Abby's a idiot. But I have to say, in one or two things she was saying today, she does have points. It's just that... Look who's talking. Sammy, this little waste man, this Captain Birdseye's nephew. The guy looks like a flipping Peruvian florist and them things there. Like a flipping... Anyway, the waste man telling Jess, oh, I'm just glad we're not in the bottom three and showing his flipping rabbit teeth and them things there. Fam, his teeth looks like his dad is a horse. But he was saying, oh, I, 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 I'm just glad we're not in the, in the bottom three. Fam, like... You, we just got more pressing issues to deal with. That's why you'll be back there. They'll, 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 trust me. What soon you'll be back there? Waste man. He's like, oh, happy and stuff. Fam, 
This guy's a waste, man. I don't, I don't care. But anyway, Mitch pulled up Ty in it about what Ty said earlier in front of the whole group about how Mitch doesn't deserve to be here and them things. That Mitch was like, "Raw, he was hurt still." <laughs> It touched him on the left side of his chest still. It touched him on the soft part and everything's there. Mitch was like, bro, like you, like I was so excited to get back to see you and Zach. You like, you guys are my, like my best. <laughs> Ty was like, don't lie, man. You might, maybe Zach, you're not, you didn't get back to see me and them things there. He was like, no, honestly, bro, honestly, honestly, you're like, you're like my best mate in here. Like you and Zach, like, like I really like you guys. And he was like, he was hurt still. You know, them ones there. Um, Ty apologized. And they were cool again and stuff. But I'm glad. I'm glad. As much of a weasel that Mitch is, yeah. He he pulled him up and said, yo, like, what are you doing? You're meant to be my brethren. Why are you doing this to me and them things there? Ty, like, anyway, I've said what I said about, I wanted to say about that bit. Then Ella B sent for flipping Abby. She sent for her like a doctor's patient. I swear down. She drew her out like it was flipping heart attack. <laughs> About, because earlier on, yeah, Abby was talking about, oh, how certain people deserve to be here more because they're, they're more of a couple and certain people shouldn't be here because they're not a proper couple and all that. And I was thinking, bro, who the hell let this flipping mosquito talk? This girl, this flipping weasel, this girl looks like flipping Alexandra from that makeup advert. Who the hell told her she could talk of them things there? Bro, she started saying all these things. Anyway... Ella drew her out, yeah? Ella said it's a bit nasty, the comments she made. She's making her feel unwelcome, like she shouldn't be here. Like, she's got as much right to be there as anybody else and all them things there. And then Abby's there trying to justify herself on why she said the comment. But just shut up, man. Shut up. And it's true what Whitney said. It's coming from a bitter place. It's coming from a bitter place. Why are you so vocal about Mitch? Why are you not vocal about every, every other people in the villa? Why is it about Mitch? Little waste girl, Abby talking about, oh... The strongest couple stay and the weakest ones leave. Why are you and Scott here then? Respectfully to Scott, yeah? Bro, we should get rid of both of you because you lot ain't really compatible. You lot are just here by the fault. What are you talking about? This flipping little pepperoni, this Savaloy looking waist chick, this proper waist cadet. Who does she think she is? And I'm not even an LB fan. I think they're both waist cadets, yeah? But I'll take her back over flipping this Abby girl any day. This girl is despicable. Proper low down scumbag. Like I said, a bottom feeder. This girl is a king prawn. Not even a king prawn. She is a minuscule one. A little, yo. Not even an Atlantic one. A sewer prawn. <laughs> But you know what, yeah? Did you guys see when she was having a conversation with Abby, yeah? How Scott was there and Scott had her back. Scott, he shut it down at the end and he took her away. Like, he, bro, he loves that girl, you know? He likes Abby. <laughs> that's mad still. Imagine that's your girl, Abby, you know? But yeah, see how we had Abby's back? But he had her back like a chiropractor. Like she needed a Heimlich and them things there. He proper, proper had her back. That's how this Loch Ness Monster should have had um, Whitney's back when, when, when Zach was fam. Anyway, I will not digress. Then Scott went over and I think um, Whitney, um, Lockham, Ty and Ella were sitting like outside with a day bed and, and, and all that stuff, yeah? And Scott was telling them about it and all that stuff. And Ella, Ella, Ella's... I don't know why Ella's back in Abbey. Like, Ella, I don't... I'm, something about Ella, man. I've been seeing it from... Not just now, from earlier on in the... I, I don't know, man. Ella, there's something a bit... I don't know, but Ella was back in Abby. She got Abby's back. And Whitney's just saying, like, look, this gal is just moving mad bitter. Bitter like Lyman and things there. And, like, Ella didn't agree with her. But a few of the other girls agreed with her. Because it's just, like I said, it's just only with Mitch her problem is. That's when her and Whitney had the conversation. And they sat down. And she was talking to Whitney about the whole thing. And Whitney just told her in a calm, professional manner. Like, all of this, like, it's, 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 it's stemming for bitterness. She's like, no, it's not from bitterness. It's from... Whatever she said, I don't hear it. I didn't hear it. When in one ear, it came out the other. But Whitney sat there and told her about herself. <laughs> so much so that she got up and walked away and then went over to cry and them things there. Facts! Whitney told her nothing but facts. Bro, I'm not trying to hear this, Abby girl. I swear. It's just, I just don't even, I don't even like her posture. I don't like anything about her. I don't like her hair. I don't like her outfits. She just looks like a waist chick. Then they woke up in the morning, morning breath, breath smelling like ragu and all them things there, muku in the corner and all that. And they had a little morning chat here, but it was really dead. But what I picked up most is this Lockin brother. Just, there's nothing sincere about him. I don't see, bro, you know, like, I just don't see no spark between him and Whitney, man. He's talking about, oh, it's his fun times outside with Whitney. Bro, I guarantee you, I don't even think they were last two months. Like, you know what I'm saying? He might try and get the press and all that, try and get whatever money he can out of it. 
This guy is a waste, man. There's just, there's just something I don't trust about him. And you know what, yeah? I was talking to one of my good friends, yeah? Like, obviously, I met her through the channel, Wendy. Shout out to Wendy. Like, we, we was voice noting. She was voice noting me on Instagram the other day. She spoke. She's American, yeah? And she said something very, very important about how if Whitney's whole situation was reversed, if that was a black guy with someone that's um, non-black, white, or someone like Lockin and them things there, that we wouldn't have this doubt in our head. But there's something, I believe her in what she was saying. I believe like we've been conditioned. I don't know. Do you guys see what I'm saying? There's a black guy with a white girl. We don't look at it like, oh, like she don't really find him attractive. But we're saying that about Whitney. Do you get it? I, do, maybe it's a flaw I have. Like it's a, it's a good shout out to Wendy, man. She pointed out the other day. I don't know if you understand the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah? She's trying to point out the double standards. How we can look at Whitney and Lockham and be like, oh, like he doesn't fancy her. But if the roles are reversed and it was a black guy and a white girl, do you know what I'm saying? We, we, we wouldn't be saying them things here. Do you know what I mean? Molly, Molly was a waste, man. Imagine in the morning, yeah, she was still like in the corner, sitting in the corner like Dizzy Rascal and them things there, yeah? Like, she, wants, she wanted this grand gesture from Zach and them things there. And my man just walking around looking like Spongebob. He didn't really care. It's like, she, I don't care about them. Do you guys care? Let me know what you think. If you, want, if you care, then I might invest some more time in it. But I don't care. I really don't, honestly. I like and rate the fact that Scott was telling Abby to squash, um, to go squash the thing with Mitch like mince meat, squash it like audio and them things there. She told him to squash it and even squash the thing with um, Abby as well. I like that still. I like, I like the way he's thinking still. I like that. I don't think Abby's the right person for him. Then the night time comes. You know how the night time goes? Because the night time is the right time. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I ain't got that much energy in me today. I'm trying still. <laughs> I'm really trying. But, um, Ty wanted to tell wanted to show Ella that he loves her do this mad thing let her know he loves her so he got his little minions involved um, Sammy little waste man and Zach to prepare the yard and he got her ready so he can go surprise her and all them things there and he done it he took her outside he told her some emotional speech she was like oh Ella side note Ella look in that orange outfit she looked so so good banging with a slit on the side oh Okay, snap back to reality, yeah? So, he he done his little mushy thing. He told her he loved her and all that. Imagine, yeah? The brother took her all outside, done all the madness, yeah? And he didn't even tell her. He didn't even make her his girlfriend. <laughs> tell me he's not playing a game. Tell me Ty is not playing a game. I know a lot of people like him because he's a nice character. He's a good character. He's fun to watch. He's funny. Very rare. But let's be real now. Bro, he's playing a girl. He's playing the public. Like, anyway, I want to know what you guys think. How can you do all of that, yeah, and not still not ask the girl to be your girlfriend? Just to tell her you love her. He could have done that in the villa. In the shower. Waste man thing. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about tonight's episode. It's your boyfriend's told you that we do.